How you doing everybody? Welcome to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope you're having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope all is well in your lives. I hope all is well in your in your walk in the faith of Jesus Christ. I pray that the trials and tribulations that you are going through right now, that Christ shines through them brightly. And I pray that through these different trials and tribulations that you are going through, that you can be a testimony and be a witness to others. I pray that whatever you're going through, you aren't complaining about it, you aren't pouting, but that you are glorifying God Almighty in and through these trials and tribulations. You may not understand what you're going through right now, but there's a reason for it. I pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. I didn't plan on praying that, but I just felt led by the Holy Spirit to do so. But what I want to talk about is something short. Um, they had the TV on in here today. And it was saying something about 12 million acres of land had been burned up. And it got me to thinking about Revelation, where one third of the grass and the trees and the, the earth is burnt up during a portion of what is known as Jacob's trouble. I don't even call it the Great Tribulation anymore. And I tell you why I don't call it the Great Tribulation anymore, because that's not the term for it. I will probably do a video on this. No, I'm kind of getting off topic, but I uh, just want to share a few things. If you look up every instance in the Bible where it speaks about tribulation, it's always given a description, a general description of going through something. Like we go through tribulations, but it never really specifically calls that time period as the great tribulation. Yes, there is a Bible verse that says great tribulation, but... It's in the context of what it's describing. If you go through the Bible and look it up, the first time the word tribulation appears, I think it's, it's in the Old Testament. I don't think I know. It's in the Old Testament or whatnot. Um, it's in reference to Israel and God is telling them that they, I, I can't remember exactly. I want to say he's telling them that if they don't, follow his statutes and commandments then they will have tribulation or it may, it may just be speaking about tribulation in general so don't quote me on that um go on google or whatnot if you got the bible bible search program type in tribulation and you will see the first instance of it occurring and what it's talking about in the context of it but i don't call it the great tribulation anymore because that term people can use it and twist it and you know, for post-trib and Mid trip and all that stuff, which isn't even, it just I don't understand how people believe in post trip and mid trip because if Jesus said, I know I'm getting off topic, but I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit. What's on my mind to speak on my heart? If Jesus said that no man knows the day of the or the hour of his return, Jacob's trouble starts when that seven year agreement is signed and confirmed by the antichrist so therefore that is fact you can't refute that that that's when the time of jacob's trouble starts when that covenant is confirmed and possibly going to do a video on that lord willing about what it means and what god has revealed to me from the little that i have studied on it and whatnot I believe what God is showing me is that covenant that he is confirming is the old covenant of the sacrificial system. 
there are two covenants in Galatians. Galatians talks about there being two covenants. Is it Galatians? Yeah, I think Galatians 3 talks about there being two covenants representing two people, the children of the flesh and then the children of the promise, which if you are a children of the promise and you're promised with uh, you're the promises by Abraham, because we know that Abraham faith was imputed, imputed to Abraham. Well, excuse me, righteousness was imputed to Abraham because of his faith. So um, check that out in Galatians. It talks about the two covenants. So I, I was reading that uh, a few weeks ago. And I found that interesting and everything. God was revealing some things to me about that. But um, yeah, if you know when the time of Jacob's trouble starts, which is when the covenant is confirmed by the Antichrist, then you can count from that day into three and a half years in, which would be the mid trip. But okay, this is exactly three and a, three, I said three and a half days, three and a half years, I think. That's say three and a half days or three and a half years. I'm sorry. But um you can count three and a half years from that time period, and then you will know when the return of Jesus is. If you believe in mid trip. If you believe in uh post trip, then you can count from the time that the covenant is confirmed until seven years, and then you will know the day and the hour. Because we know that God is exact, He's precise. We may not see it all the time and understand things about why God does certain things in his timing, but God is precise in why he does things. So you could count uh, three and a half years in, seven years in, and whatnot. So that's just one of many things that I don't, I mean, I understand why people believe in post trip and mere trip because they believe they have something to prove. Oh, you gotta, I got to die for my faith. I got to die for my faith. Um, a Christian should be ready to die at any, any point. Not just because of Jacob's trouble. And the time period is called what? Jacob's trouble. Let's say church's trouble. Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Israel. The church consists of Jews and Gentiles. Interesting. But I have studies on that if you want to check that out about why the rapture the catching away. Don't even want to use that term because people want to if people want to be technical, then we can be technical. We can be biblical about it. The catching away that's talked about in Thessalonians is before the time of Jacob's trouble. 100%. I'm sure about that. Not because of what I'm saying, but because of what scriptures teach. I did a study on... Um, Showing the mysteries of the, the mystery of the candlesticks. It tells you specifically what the candlesticks are. The candlesticks represent the spirits of the seven churches. If you go a little bit further, you see where the candlesticks end up at. Clearly, there's no way around it. But um, getting back on topic, I was seeing a video or a news clip that had a TV on in here. When I came here and they were talking about the land being burnt up 12 million acres, it made me think about Revelation. I just want to ask you something. Do you think that God is showing us something? All this land being burnt up and also they're talking about record-breaking temperatures of heat. I live in Georgia and it's, it's hot anyway, but it's been extremely hot. Now I want to talk a little bit about global warming. You know, there are a lot of people who say that global warming is a farce. It's fake and it's this and it's that, but I believe that global warming may be true. And I want you to hear me out on this. 
you know, I like to give things in a different perspective to make your mind think. I believe that global warming is true to an extent, biblically, because the earth is heating up. It is hotter than it usually is. The temperatures uh, have risen. The polar caps and stuff, they are melting. That is fact. Let's even, let's go even deeper into it. Scriptures tell us what? That hell hath enlarged itself. So if hell has enlarged itself, then that would mean that the heat from hell, because hell is a literal physical place, the heat, wouldn't it have effects on the earth? Because we know the spiritual and the physical, they tie in together. It happens in the spiritual first and then it manifests itself in the physical. We, we know that. You pray in the spirit and then it manifests itself in the physical. God answers those prayers in the physical because we are in the physical world as it stands right now. So I believe that um, what they're saying is global warming. You know, they're going to take it and they're going to twist it and stuff. I believe it's true. But from a biblical standpoint, because hell has enlarged itself um, and we are in that time, that time period. It is hotter. That's a fact. You can't deny that it's not hot. You have record breaking temperatures all around the world as far as heat. And then they're saying that it's only going to get. Um, it's only going to get worse. As far as temperatures and stuff. And these are all facts that you can go confirm for yourself. Is God showing us something? Is God telling us something? And are we taking heed to what he is showing and what he's telling us? <clears throat> I just find that interesting. That this land is being burnt up and the scriptures speak specifically about one third of the land being burnt up during a part of the uh, part of Jacob's trouble when God's wrath is poured out. And it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And we know the scriptures say the earth is going to be burnt up with heat. I mean, doesn't it just make sense? It's not like I'm forcing it or anything. The earth is going to be burnt up with fire. So it doesn't make sense that things would get hotter on earth. But that's all I have. I just want to share this quick video, um, give you something to think about, seek the Lord on it, and I pray you all have a blessed day, and more importantly, most importantly, you don't want to be caught when this heat from God, his wrath is poured out, no mercy, he's going to pour it out, and it's not going to be pretty. You're not going to be able to run. You're not going to be able to hide. You will not escape the wrath of God. You can hide. Try to. You can run. Try to. But you won't be able to. You can try to hide in hell. But you still won't be able to hide from him. And there's a scripture on that too. No matter where you go, God will find you. Your sins will catch up with you or maybe they have caught up with you right now and you're looking and you're wondering for answers there's only one answer Jesus Christ the time is coming very very soon when you will remember these exact videos that you are watching out of curiosity or to mock Christians there's going to come a time where I truly believe that every video you watch all these different words that you listen to from different Christians who were preaching the gospel to you who were preaching the truth to you weren't trying to get your money just trying to get you to see what's going on so you could receive salvation so you do not have to be a part of the wrath of God there's coming a time when you will remember 
and you will look foolish because you rejected truth. You rejected Jesus Christ. My, my, my. Today is a day of salvation. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. A simple message. Simple gospel. Pure love. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's name. And as always, stay focused for Jesus.